Hello ladies and gentlemen in this video we are going to cover the most important current affairs questions from 10th of January to 16th of January now this is a detailed video one more thing for mobile optimized ebooks you can install gk today academy app so now let's start which state is set to conduct a dedicated state level adalat for lgbt community so for the first time kerala state youth commission has announced that it would conduct a state level adalat for lgbt community and this program would be held at the capital of kerala that is tiruvananthapuram and the main objective of this adalat is to encourage transgender community to come out with their grievances so that the government can take initiative for the redressal of their issues so right answer is kerala now if we talk about lgbt it is lesbian gay bisexual and transgender and recently india's first transgender university was in news as it would be opened in kushinagar of uttar pradesh apart from that recently india's first transgender library was started in madurai the union external affairs minister recently launched a book pax sinica the implications for indian down who is the author of book right answer is mr samir saran actually this book was in news recently as union external affairs minister mr s jay shankar launched this book pax sinica this book is authored by mr samir saran and co-authored by mr akhil dev and this book highlights the step of china during the presidency of mr xi jinping if we talk about dr samir saran he is associated with orf orf is observer research foundation and recently orf was in news because orf in association with mea is going to organize raisina dialogue and it is going to be in new delhi now if we talk about mea it is ministry of external affairs present minister is mr s jay shankar and present foreign secretary is mr v k gokhale and next foreign secretary is mr harshvardhan sringla mea was also in news as ministry of external affairs is going to set up a new division called nest nest stands for new and emerging strategic technologies mea was also in news as recently it celebrated pravasi bhartiya divas pravasi bhartiya divas is celebrated every year on 9th of january as on this day in 1915 mahatma gandhi ji returned from south africa to india which city is set to host the international level event milan in march 2020 right answer is visakhapatnam so milan is a multilateral naval exercise and it is going to be in visakhapatnam in march 2020 now previously it was supposed to be held at andaman and nicobar islands however later it was changed to visakhapatnam as navies of multiple countries are participating in this event if we talk about navy present navy chief is admiral karambir singh indian navy was also in news as recently china and pakistan launched a naval drill in north arabian sea and the name of this naval drill is sea guardians now how indian navy is connected to this because indian navy deployed its ins vikramaditya in north arabian sea where the exercise is being held Indian Navy was also in news as recently first Indo-Qatari joint naval exercise Jair Al-Bahr held in Qatar in Doha Doha is the capital of Qatar and Qatar is going to be the host of 2022 FIFA World Cup now one important thing that should be noted is that the theme of this Milan exercise is synergy across the seas Manmad and Bhusawal railway stations where artificial intelligence based facial recognition technology was recently installed belongs to which state of india so recently indian railways installed artificial intelligence based facial recognition technology in manmad and busawal stations of maharashtra and bengaluru station of karnataka so right answer is maharashtra these two railway stations are associated to maharashtra and the psu and railway ministry railtel is the nodal authority that is responsible for carrying that is responsible for executing this project of 
artificial intelligence now if we talk about indian railways recently indian railways renamed rpf that is railway protection force as indian railway protection force service apart from that recently mr v k yadav has been reappointed as the chief of railway board for one more year if we talk about maharashtra recently maharashtra government launched cyber safety women initiative apart from that recently mr ajit pawar took oath as the deputy chief minister of maharashtra in addition to that recently india justice report was released maharashtra is a top performing state in terms of delivering justice to its people on the other hand up that is uttar pradesh is the worst performer the highest railway bridge in the world is to be constructed in which state or union territory right answer is jammu and kashmir so as a part of major udhampur srinagar baramula rail link project a new railway bridge is to be constructed and this bridge is in newly formed union territory of jammu and kashmir and it is going to be the world's highest railway bridge and this project is expected to be completed by 2021 now it should be noted that presently the highest railway bridge in the world is baipan river shubai railway bridge of china so after completion in 2021 this bridge in india is going to be the world's highest railway bridge now if we talk about jammu and kashmir so the state of jammu and kashmir was bifurcated on 31st of october and it was bifurcated into two union territories one is union territory of jammu and kashmir another one is union territory of ladakh 31st of october is special as it is the birth anniversary of sardar patel and it is celebrated as national unity day and recently the second tallest statue of sardar patel was inaugurated in gujarat vishu hindi divas or world hindi day is celebrated every year on which date right answer is 10th of january so vishu hindi divas or world hindi day is celebrated every year on 10th of january now this day is celebrated to commemorate the first world hindi conference which held in 1975 from 10th of january to 12th of january and that's why 10th of january is celebrated as world hindi day and the first world hindi day was observed on 10th of january in 2006 and since then we are celebrating every 10th of january as world hindi day now this is world hindi day that is celebrated on 10th of january on 14th of september we celebrate hindi divas it should be noted that this 10th of january day is world day while this 14th of september day is having national significance why so because on 14th of september the constituent assembly adopted hindi as the official language of india who has been recently chosen for muppa varappu venkaiya naidu national award for excellence right answer is ms swaminathan so the father of green revolution dr ms swaminathan was selected for muppa varappu venkaiya naidu national award for excellence and this award is instituted by muppa varappu foundation based at hyderabad and dr swaminathan was selected for this award for his contributions towards agriculture which state assembly has recently adopted a new logo for its legislative assembly which consists of fox tail orchid so recently arunachal pradesh has adopted a new logo for its legislative assembly and this new logo consists of national emblem and the state flower of arunachal pradesh fox tail orchid if we talk about arunachal pradesh recently arunachal pradesh chief minister mr pema khandu launched first hindi newspaper of arunachal pradesh and the name of this newspaper is arun bhumi apart from that arunachal pradesh was also in news as recently arunachal pradesh launched teachers transfer and posting policy and based on this policy the government schools will be divided into three groups hard medium and soft so a question could be asked that recently which state has decided to divide schools in three groups of hard medium and soft now this grouping is done based on the topography accessibility and degree of difficulty in staying at such places of posting 
Apart from that, Arunachal Pradesh was also in news as it is a part of ILP that is inner line permit and recently Manipur was included into ILP. So now four states are part of ILP, Arunachal Pradesh, Nagaland, Manipur and Mizoram. A cluster of institutions in which states Ayurveda University is to get the status of institutes of national importance. So recently union cabinet approved to confer the status of institution of national importance to a cluster of Ayurvedic institutions in Gujarat in Ayurved University campus in Jamnagar. If we talk about Gujarat, recently KVIC that is Khadi and Village Industries Commission opened first self-processing plant in Gujarat. Answer in comment box, this plant will be helpful for the production of which saris. Apart from that, recently Gujarat was in news as Gandhinagar district of Gujarat became first kerosene free district of Gujarat. In addition to that, Gujarat was also in news because of locust invasion. Apart from that, recently, the government has given approval to world's first CNG terminal and this is going to be at Bhavnagar port in Gujarat. In addition to that, recently, Gujarat Chief Minister Mr. Vijay Rupani inaugurated world's second tallest statue of Sardar Patel in Ahmedabad and this statue has been designed by Mr. Ram V. Sutar. The world's tallest statue of Sardar Patel is in Narmada district of Gujarat and it is Statue of Unity and that statue was also designed by Mr. Ram V. Sutar who has been recently chosen for Muppavarappu Venkaya Naidu National Award for Social Service. Right answer is Dr. Gutta Maniratnam. So recently Dr. Gutta Maniratnam has been selected for Muppavarappu Venkaya Naidu National Award for Social Service. Now this award was instituted by Swan Bharat Trust. What is India's GDP growth rate for fiscal year 2020 as estimated by the World Bank? So recently, World Bank released Global Economic Prospectus report and as per this report, India's growth rate is projected to accelerate to 5% in fiscal year of 2019 to 2020 and India's GDP is likely to have a growth rate of 5.8% in the following financial year. So right answer is 5.8%. Now if we talk about World Bank, World Bank released this report and the name of report was Global Economic Prospectus Report. Apart from that, World Bank was also in news as it released Ease of Doing Business Report. As per this report, India is on 63rd position last year. India was on 77th position. Now World Bank was also in news as World Bank has decided to include Kolkata and Bengaluru besides Delhi and Mumbai for preparing ease of doing business report to provide a holistic picture of business environment in our country. Which Indian city is set to host the International Aviation Exhibition Wings India 2020? Right answer is Hyderabad. So international conference come exhibition on civil aviation sector is scheduled to be in Hyderabad in March 2020. And the name of this event is Wings India 2020. And the Ministry of Civil Aviation is going to organize this event in association with FICCI. And this one is one of the largest event on civil aviation in Asia. Now, if we talk about FICCI, recently Sangeeta Reddy has taken over as the president of FICCI. She is the successor of Mr. Sandeep Somani. What is rank of Indian passport in recently released Henley Passport Index? So recently, Henley Passport Index was released and as per that, India is on 84th position. So India's rank is 84 and it is 2 rank above that of last year. Apart from that, India's mobility score is 58. That means Indian passport holders can travel to 58 countries without a prior visa. If we talk about this Henley Passport Index, so the index is topped by Japan while Singapore is on second position. If we talk about Japan, recently Japan was in news as it is going to be the host of 2020 Summer Olympic Games. Apart from that, Japan was also in news as recently Japan launched world's first liquid hydrogen transport ship. Japan was also in news as recently Global 
climate risk index was released and as per this index japan is on top position india is on fifth position and this index was prepared by environmental think tank german watch which is the world's fastest growing city in terms of population according to recent economist intelligence unit report right answer is malapuram so recently eiu that is economist intelligence unit released a report based on the data provided by united nations population division and as per this report malapuram a city in north kerala topped the list that means it is world's fastest growing city in terms of population the other two cities of kerala are on fourth and tenth position so malapuram is on first position while kozhikode in kerala is on fourth position and kollam is on tenth position so these are the cities which are growing very fast in terms of population now as per the report malapuram has recorded 44% rise in population between 2015 to 2020 so as per this report three cities of kerala were in top 10 so population is something about which india need to take some policy initiatives now coming back to kerala recently kerala was in news because of silver line project answer in comment box what is the silver line project apart from that kerala was also in news because of bar headed goose as recently the bar headed goose was spotted in kerala they are found in central china and mongolia and during winter season they migrate to southwards apart from that kerala was also in news as recently kerala passed anti caa resolution and kerala became the first state in india to pass such anti caa resolution caa stands for citizenship amendment act kfw a german development bank will assist which indian state to develop its zero budget natural farming so it is andhra pradesh and andhra pradesh government will receive loan for expansion of zero budget natural farming from this german development bank kfw if we talk about andhra pradesh andhra pradesh was in news because of disha act apart from that andhra pradesh was on also in news as recently state government decided to deliver sand to the customers doorstep this decision was taken to prevent the sand smuggling in addition to that recently the state government appointed two officers to implement this this act answer in comment box what is the name of those two officers apart from that andhra pradesh was also in news as the global healthcare summit is going to be in visakhapatnam in andhra pradesh recently the election commission of india renewed the memorandum of understanding on electoral cooperation with which country right answer is mauritius so recently the election commission of india renewed the memorandum of understanding on electoral cooperation with mauritius and this mou was signed by the chief election commissioner of india mr sunil arora if we talk about mauritius the capital of mauritius is port louis now the headquarters of iora is also in mauritius iora stands for indian ocean rim association recently iora conference held in uae and uae became the president of iora for next two year while bangladesh became the vice president for next two years now answer in comment box how many countries are the member of iora which digital payment company has launched unified qr code for merchants for unlimited payments right answer is paytm so recently paytm has launched an all in one qr code for merchants for unlimited payments now if we talk about paytm recently bcci extended paytm association as title sponsor bcci stands for board of control for cricket in india president of bcci is mr sorov ganguly and recently mr k srikant and ms anjum chopra was selected for the ck naidu lifetime award and these awards are given by bcci which state has recently launched the scheme called amma vodi to provide a financial assistance to the mothers of school going children so right answer is andhra pradesh so andhra pradesh government launched this scheme amma vodi and as per the scheme a financial assistance of rupee 15000 will be provided to the mothers or guardians of school going children to educate them the chief minister of andhra pradesh is mr ysr jagan mohan reddy which bank has recently launched a customized application set for banking products 
named My Apps. So it is an initiative by SDFC Bank, and SDFC Bank has recently launched this customized group of banking products called My Apps. So this application will be beneficial for several type of institutions like urban local bodies and societies to digitize their transaction. Now, if we talk about SDFC, recently SDFC Bank crossed the hundred billion dollar market capitalization. and it became the only third company of india to achieve this milestone answer in comment books which are the top 2 companies who achieved this milestone what is the name of india's first indigenous aircraft carrier which is being built at kochi right answer is vikrant so india's first indigenous aircraft carrier vikrant is being manufactured at kochi shipyard and this is expected to be commissioned by early 2021 the union Home Minister Mr Amit Shah recently released a book titled Karam Yodha Granth on the life of which Indian political leader right answer is Mr Narendra Modi so recently Home Minister Mr Amit Shah released a book titled Karam Yodha Granth and it is based on the life of present Indian prime minister if we talk about home minister Mr Amit Shah recently his son Mr Jay Shah became the secretary of bcci and recently mr saurav ganguly became the president of bcci present home secretary is mr ajay kumar bhalla answer in comment box who is present cabinet secretary which union ministry is set to launch a program for development of eastern states and the name of this program is purvodaya so recently union ministry of steel announced a program called purvodaya and it is a program for accelerated development of eastern region through integrated steel hub and the present minister for ministry of steel is mr dharmendra pradhan and he is member of rajya sabha from madhya pradesh now if we talk about this purvodaya program the eastern states of india like odisha jharkhand chatisgarh west bengal and northern andhra pradesh possess a huge share of reserves however they are lagging behind in development so the idea is to ensure the development of these states and these areas which are resource rich even though they are backward in terms of development now if we talk about steel recently mr sajjan jindal was appointed as the vice chairman of world steel association the headquarter of world steel association is in brussels in belgium and recently ms sophie willems became the first female prime minister of belgium in fact the headquarter of nato is also in brussels answer in comment box which country was the host of latest nato summit the ministry of youth affairs and sports is to organize the 23rd national youth festival in lucknow now it is celebrated to commemorate the birthday of which famous personality right answer is swami vivekanand so the Ministry of Youth Affairs and Sports is going to organize National Youth Festival from 12th of January to 16th of January and it will be organized in Uttar Pradesh. The festival is organized to commemorate the birth anniversary of Swami Vivekanand. Actually, the birth anniversary of Swami Vivekanand is celebrated as National Youth Day and it is observed on 12th of January and the entire week is celebrated as National Youth Week. If we talk about Lucknow, it is in Uttar Pradesh. Present Chief Minister of Uttar Pradesh is Mr. Yogi Adityanath. And recently, Uttar Pradesh was in news as Health ATM was started at Lucknow Railway Station. Lucknow was also in news as it was the host of recent All India Police Science Congress. And this Police Science Congress was inaugurated by LG of Puducherry, and she is Ms. Kiran Bedi. Apart from that, Lucknow was also in news as it is the host of this year's defense expo in addition to that lucknow was also in news as recently prime minister mr modi inaugurated the statue of former prime minister mr vajpayee ji in lucknow and the birth anniversary of mr atal bihari vajpayee is celebrated as good governance day on this occasion good governance index was released answer in comment box which organization released this index the first in depth review of india's energy policies was recently released by which organization right answer is 
International Energy Agency. So recently, IEA released this first ever in-depth review of India's energy policies. And IEA released this analysis in collaboration with Niti Aayog. If we talk about IEA, it is International Energy Agency, headquarters is in Paris. Which state government recently announced to prepare special textbooks for children with learning disabilities. So recently, state government of Uttar Pradesh announced that special textbook would be prepared for children who have learning disabilities. Actually, children with intellectual disabilities will be provided these specially designed textbook so that they can learn in a much faster way. Now, if we talk about Uttar Pradesh, the state was in use as India's first university for transgenders will be set up in Khushinagar district of Uttar Pradesh. Apart from that, Uttar Pradesh was also in use as recently NCRB released a report related to crimes. NCRB stands for National Crime Record Bureau. It is under MHA, that is Ministry of Home Affairs. And as per NCRB report, Uttar Pradesh is on top position in terms of crimes against women. Apart from that, Uttar Pradesh was also in use because of its campaign against filaria. In addition to that, recently, the Itawa Lion Safari in Uttar Pradesh was opened for general public. The freedom of speech and freedom to carry on a business through internet is covered under which article of Indian Constitution? So it is covered under Article 19 of Indian Constitution and recently Supreme Court declared that freedom of speech and expression and freedom to carry on a business through internet is a constitutional right under Article 19. So this is a constitutional right under Article 19 1A and Article 19 1G. And this landmark judgment came at the backdrop of restrictions imposed on Jammu and Kashmir Union Territory with respect to internet connectivity. Now recently one more high court was in use because of this right to assess internet. So recently Kerala High Court passed a judgment that access to internet is a fundamental right. Now, if we talk about Kerala, recently Kerala passed a resolution against CAA and it became the first state to do so. CAA stands for Citizenship Amendment Act. The report titled National Strategy for Financial Inclusion was recently released by which organization? So recently, a report related to the strategy of financial inclusion was released by RBI, that is Reserve Bank of India. And the report also suggested that PCR will be made functional by 2022. PCR stands for Public Credit Registry. So it will be a database of all the creditors at one place. Now, if we talk about RBI, RBI was in news because of Operation Twist. In addition to that, RBI was also in news because it released FSR, that is Financial Stability Report. In addition to that, RBI was also in news because of Money App. It is an app launched by RBI for the visually impaired person so that they can identify currency notes with the help of this app. And the full form of money is Mobile Aided Note Identifier. Who has been recently named as the new Sultan of Oman? Right answer is Haitham bin Tariq. So recently, the ruler of Oman and one of the longest serving ruler in Middle East countries, Sultan Qaboos bin Syed passed away. And after his demise, Mr. Haitham bin Tariq was appointed as the successor. Now, it should be noted that it is mandatory as per the constitution of Oman to name the successor of throne within three days. Now, if we talk about Oman, it is a country in West Asia. The capital of Oman is Muscat and Oman shares border with Gulf of Oman and Arabian Sea. Now, recently Oman was in news because of two military exercises. One was exercise Eastern Briz. Another one was exercise Naseem Al-Bahar. So this was an exercise between Indian Air Force and Air Force of Oman. And this one was a joint bilateral exercise between Indian Navy and Navy of Oman. The biennial Global Pulses Conference named the Pulses Conclave 2020 is to be held in which state? So it is going to be in Maharashtra and this conference is going to be in 
February 2020 and IPGA is going to organize this conference. IPGA stands for India Pulses and Grains Association. So this conference will be in Maharashtra. Recently Maharashtra was in news as Maharashtra government started Cyber Safe Women Initiative. Apart from that Maharashtra was also in news as recently Maharashtra Legislative Assembly passed a resolution requesting the central government for a caste based census. Maharashtra was also in news as recently Mr Ajit Pawar of NCP became the deputy chief minister of Maharashtra. The chief minister of Maharashtra is Mr Uddhav Thackeray and the governor of Maharashtra is Mr Bhagat Singh Koshyari. He is a former chief minister of Uttarakhand. Present chief minister of Uttarakhand is Mr Trivendra Singh Rawat. The state energy efficiency index was recently released by which organization? So recently BWE that is Bureau of Energy Efficiency in association with Alliance for Energy Efficiency Economy released this state energy efficiency index and this index was prepared based on the achievement of states towards implementation of energy efficiency and as per this index Haryana Karnataka and Kerala are the top performer of this year's state energy efficiency index now if we talk about bwe that is bureau of energy efficiency it is under ministry of power and every year on 14th of december national energy conservation day is celebrated and this is celebrated by bwe apart from that the week between december 14 to december 20 is celebrated as national energy conservation week chidanand murthy who passed away recently was a veteran scholar in which language so mr murthy was a veteran scholar of kannada language and he passed away recently he played a crucial role in securing classical language status to kannada language apart from that mr murthy also played a vital role in demanding the renaming of hyderabad karnataka region and on his demand this region was renamed as kalyan karnataka if we talk about classical languages as of now total 6 languages have been given the status of classical language these are tamil sanskrit telugu kannada malayalam and odia so odia was given the status of classical language in 2014 and tamil was given the status of classical language in 2004 recently rbi amended its kyc norms to allow which type of authentication so right answer is video based authentication kyc stands for no your customer so recently rbi allowed a video based authentication as an alternative method of e kyc norms now this video based authentication method was proposed by a expert committee on msme that is micro small and medium enterprises and this committee was headed by former chairman of sebi mr uk sinha so this committee recommended that RBI should allow video based authentication for e KYC that means now you can complete your KYC norms using video based authentication so now RBI also announced that video verification will be aadhar based and the user can display his documents via a video chat or a video call which state government recently sanctioned money for the proposed Aswakulla Khan Geological Garden so recently the Uttar Pradesh government approved the funding for a new geological garden in Gorakhpur and it will be named after our freedom fighter Mr Aswakulla Khan now if we talk about Uttar Pradesh the state was in news as recently Uttar Pradesh government announced annual pension of rupees 6000 per year for muslim women who were given triple talaq by their husbands Apart from that Uttar Pradesh was also in news as Uttar Pradesh is the worst performer as per Niti Aayog's school education quality index and this index is topped by Kerala apart from that Uttar Pradesh was also in news as recently India's first corporate train was launched between Delhi and Lucknow and the name of this train is Tejas Express SDFC has completed the acquisition of majority stake in which private insurance company recently right answer is apollo munich apollo munich health insurance so recently sdfc and its subsidiary 
एस डी एफ सी आगो गो द अप्रूवल्स ऑफ सी सी आई सी सी आई स्टैंड फॉर कॉम्पिटिशन कमीशन ऑफ इंडिया एंड इट गो द अप्रूवल्स फॉर अक्वायरिंग ए मेजोरिटी स्टेक इन अपोलो म्यूनिक सो एस डी एफ सी अक्वायर्ड फिफ्टी पॉइंट एट जीरो परसेंट स्टेक इन अपोलो म्यूनिक नाउ एस डी एफ सी ऑल्सो अनाउंस हेल्थ इंश्योरेंस हैज बीन रीनेम्ड एज एस डी एफ सी अगो हेल्थ इंश्योरेंस लिमिटेड नाउ आंसर इन कमेंट बुक्स वॉट इज द रेगुलेटिंग अथोरिटी फॉर इंश्योरेंस सेक्टर इन आवर कंट्री नाउ कमिंग बैक टू एस डी एफ सी एस डी एफ सी एस बी आई एंड आई सी आई सी आई दीज थ्री आर द डी एस आई बी एज पर आर बी आई डी एस आई बी स्टैंड फॉर डोमेस्टिक सिस्टमेटिकली इम्पोर्टेंट बैंक दैट मीन्स दीज बैंक आर वेरी वेरी क्रूशियल फॉर इंडियन इकोनॉमी Apart from that, SDFC was also in news as it is the third company in our country to achieve a milestone of 100 billion market capitalization. Reliance and TCS are the first two, and SDFC is third such company to achieve this milestone. The Union Home Minister recently launched a center named I4C in New Delhi. Now the center is associated to which sector? Right answer is cyber crime. So recently, Union Home Minister Mr. Amit Shah launched I4C Center in New Delhi. I4C stands for Indian Cyber Crime Coordination Center, and it was launched in New Delhi. Apart from that, the Union Home Minister also launched National Cyber Crime Reporting Portal, and this portal is cybercrime.gov.in. So all the citizens can report cyber crime related issues online through this. portal now if we talk about few other initiatives related to cyber security recently india's first cyber crime prevention unit of india was launched in gujarat in gandhinagar and the name of this unit is aswast and this is india's first such cyber crime prevention unit it was launched in gandhinagar of gujarat drdo's novel variant of lca that is light combat aircraft made its first successful landing on which aircraft carrier of indian navy so recently after extensive trials the naval variant of lca made its first successful landing on aircraft carrier ins vikramaditya this lca that is light combat aircraft is developed by drdo now if we talk about ins vikramaditya it was inducted into indian navy in 2014 prior to indian navy it served with the russian navy now if we talk about drdo the chief of drdo is dr g satish reddy and it is under ministry of defense and recently defense ministry was in news as a new department was created in defense ministry and it is dma that is department of military affairs and it will be headed by new cds cds stands for chief of defense staff and new cds is former army chief general bipin rawat Which Indian entrepreneur cum investor recently acquired the DHFL General Insurance Company? So recently, the co-founder of Flipkart, Mr. Sachin Bansal, acquired the DHFL General Insurance Company. He bought this company from Wadhwa Group of Companies for hundred crore rupees. The Prime Minister of India recently renamed which port trust to Dr. Shama Prasad Mukherjee Port. So recently Prime Minister of India attended the 150th celebration of Kolkata Port Trust and during this event he announced that this Kolkata Port Trust would be renamed as Dr Shyam Prasad Mukherjee Port now on this occasion Prime Minister also released a commemorative stamp to mark the 150 years of Kolkata Port Trust if we talk about Dr Shyam Prasad Mukherjee he was the founder of Bharatiya Jan Sangh and following which bjp that is present bhartiya janata party was formed if we talk about this kolkata port trust it is a statutory body under ministry of shipping now on this occasion prime minister also inaugurated priti lata chhatra aawas and koshal vikas yojana which city plays host to the annual world energy summit of 2020 so world energy summit recently started in abu dhabi abu dhabi is the capital of UAE and Dubai is its largest city and the theme of this 2020 edition of the summit is rethinking global consumption 
production and investment now if we talk about abu dhabi recently world's oldest natural pearl was discovered in abu dhabi apart from that the 19th conference of iora that is indian ocean rim association held in abu dhabi in uae and after this conference uae became the president of iora for 2 years and bangladesh became the vice president answer in comment box in which country the headquarter of iora is situated union minister smriti rani recently launched a welfare scheme named yasaswini from goa so the question is what does the scheme aim at so recently ms smriti rani launched a scheme named yasaswini from goa and it is a scheme for women empowerment and the scheme supports the women self help groups that is shg so it provides interest free loan up to 5 lakh rupees on this occasion she also launched swasth sakhi project and this is a project for breast cancer screening and it will be carried out by the anganwadi workers to screen all the women of goa for this breast cancer if we talk about smriti rani she is the present women and child development minister in addition to that she is the textile minister her constituency is amethi in uttar pradesh and she defeated rahul gandhi in lok sabha elections from this amethi constituency mr gandhi contested from two seats one was amethi another was wayanad wayanad is in kerala which state has recently started an awareness campaign for farmers to protect their sugarcane crop from locust so recently department of cane development of uttar pradesh government started an awareness campaign to protect farmers and to protect their crops from locust now this locust invasion has already destroyed the crops in gujarat and rajasthan if we talk about locust these are collection of certain species of grasshoppers and they destroy the crops so recently the state government of uttar pradesh started this awareness campaign for farmers to protect their sugarcane crop apart from that recently the state also launched e ganna app for sugarcane farmers an international film festival with the theme of better film better audience and better society was recently inaugurated in which city right answer is dhaka so it was inaugurated in the capital of bangladesh dhaka and the theme is better film better audience and better society if we talk about dhaka it is the capital of bangladesh currency is taka prime minister is ms sheikh hasina her party is awami league her father is mr sheikh mujibur rahman and he is considered as the founding father of bangladesh who will participate in interaction program with students named pariksha pe charcha scheduled for year 2020 so prime minister mr modi will participate in this interaction program with students named pariksha pe charcha and this is going to be in new delhi on 20th of january and this is third edition of event in which prime minister will meet the students and prime minister will address them about overcoming exam fear pariksha is exam in hindi and charcha is interaction the workshop and exhibition on bamboo a wonder grass was recently held in which state or union territory so recently this workshop and exhibition held in union territory of jammu and kashmir and the workshop focused on the growth of bamboo industry in jammu and kashmir along the lines of northeast region so this event was organized by ministry of donor that is development of northeast region and government of jammu and kashmir and union minister mr jitendra singh inaugurated this workshop if we talk about jammu and kashmir the state of jammu and kashmir was bifurcated into two union territories on 31st of october on the other hand recently union territory of dadra and nagar haveli and daman and diu were in news because of their merger actually this merger is going to be effective from 26th of january so after this merger it will be one single union territory and this is going to be effective from 26th of january 2020 31st of october is celebrated as the national unity day as it is the birth anniversary of sardar patel and recently the second tallest statue of sardar patel 
was inaugurated in Gujarat. Answer in comment box in which city it was inaugurated and it is a 50 meter tall bronze statue and it was designed by Mr. Ram V. Sutar. He also designed this statue of unity and it is the tallest statue of Sardar Patel in world and recently the statue of unity was listed as one of the eight wonders of SCO. SCO stands for Shanghai Cooperation Organization. It was the Statue of Unity was inaugurated by Prime Minister in October 2018. What is a shopper which was sometimes seen in news recently? So recently, Casper Sky Lab made an announcement about the malware named Shopper. So the malware is said to randomly increase the ratings of some popular e-commerce websites. Now, what is surprising is that nearly 14% of the users which were affected by the SOPA malware were Indians. So cyber security is a serious challenge in present era. Now for cyber security, recently Union Home Minister Mr. Amit Shah inaugurated I4C in New Delhi. I4C stands for Indian Cyber Crime Coordination Center. In addition to that, recently Union Home Minister Mr. Amit Shah launched first Cyber Crime Prevention Unit of India and the name of this unit is Aswast and it was inaugurated in Gujarat in Gandhinagar. Which Indian cricketer won the best male international cricketer award of BCCI named Poli Umrigar Award? So recently, Mr. Jaspreet Bumra and Ms. Poonam Meadow was selected for the prestigious Poli Umrigar Award for the best international cricketer in the male and female category. So, right answer is Mr. Jaspreet Bumrah and Ms. Poonam Yadav. If we talk about BCCI, recently Mr. Saurabh Ganguly became the president of BCCI. The secretary of BCCI is Mr. Jay Shah and recently Baiju became the official team sponsor. Which country recently launched a driverless bullet train with the speed of up to 350 km per hour? So recently, China launched a driverless bullet train and the speed is up to 350 km per hour and this is expected to be deployed during 2022 Winter Olympic Games. 2026 Winter Olympic Games are going to be in Italy while 2020 Summer Olympic Games are going to be in Japan and 2024 Summer Olympic Games are going to be in France. China was also in news as recently USA removed China from currency manipulator list. Which bank has recently became the largest issuer of fast tags at 3 million fast tags? So recently Paytm Payment Bank announced that it has issued 3 million fast tags so far and it has become the largest issuer of fast tags in our country. If we talk about fast tag, recently Mr. Nitin Gadkari, who is our present Minister of Road Transport and Highways, announced that fastags will be mandatory for all vehicles, all private and commercial vehicles from 15th of January. Now, if we talk about fastag, actually these are on the windscreen of vehicle and these work on RFID. RFID stands for Radio Frequency Identification. So, fastags are the rechargeable tags and these are used for toll collection. So as soon as the vehicle will approach this toll collection, this tag reader will read information from this tag and it will automatically deduct the money. And therefore, the vehicle will not have to stop for this money payment. The Australian government recently announced that which animal could be declared as an endangered species. So recently, Australian government announced that it could place koala in endangered species category and this announcement was made after the devastating bushfires in Australia. Now in addition to koala, another species named wallaby is also greatly affected because of this bushfire and because of this bushfire recently the government committed an emergency wildlife recovery fund of 50 million Australian dollars. Now. The capital of Australia is Canberra and the Prime Minister of Australia is Mr. Scott Morrison. Currency of Australia is Australian dollar. Which country won the inaugural 
ATP Cup 2020 tournament that held at Sydney. So recently Serbia won it. Actually the team representing Serbia defeated the team of Spain in this inaugural ATP Cup 2020 tennis tournament. So it is a tennis tournament. So Serbia won it and Mr. Novak Djokovic defeated Mr. Rafael Nadal. Mr. Djokovic is from Serbia and Mr. Nadal is from Spain. Spain was also in use as the most recent conference of parties held in Spain under the presidency of Chile. In which city, the Union Home Minister launched India's first cyber crime prevention unit called Cyber Aswast. So we have already discussed this question. It was inaugurated by Union Home Minister Mr. Amit Shah and it was inaugurated in Gandhinagar in Gujarat. And this Aswast stands for Assured Assistance Service Helpline for Victims at Shortest Time. So this project was created as a helpline for victims affected by cyber crimes. Apart from that, the Home Minister also launched e-governance initiative named Vishwas and the full form of Vishwas is video integration and statewide advanced security. So this will be helpful in maintaining law and order through video analytics. Sai Ingwen was recently elected as the president of which country? So recently, Ms. Sai Ingwen got re-elected as the president of Taiwan and she gained significance as she firmly announced that she is going to protect the sovereignty of Taiwan from China. Now it should be kept in mind that China claims that Taiwan is a part of mainland China. Which national park recorded 96 unique species of wetland birds? So according to second wetland bird count, the Kanjiranga National Park recorded 96 unique species of wetland birds. Now if we talk about Kanjiranga National Park, it is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and it has the world's largest population of Indian rhinos. If we talk about UNESCO World Heritage Committee, recently Saudi Arabia got elected as the member of World Heritage Committee and this is first time that Saudi Arabia has been elected for this committee. Saudi Arabia is going to be the host of this year G20 summit and recently Saudi Arabia became the full-fledged member of FATF. Capital of Saudi Arabia is Riyadh. What is the deadline to separate roles of chairman and MD in top 500 companies as per the recent directions of SEBI? Recently SEBI that is Securities and Exchange Board of India issued notification regarding the deadline to separate roles of chairman and MD in top 500 listed companies. Previously the deadline was April 2020. Now this deadline is April 2022. And this proposal of splitting the role of chairman and MD was first made by a committee of SEBI. And this committee was chaired by Mr. Uday Kotek. And this committee was on corporate governance. The headquarters of SEBI is in Mumbai and Mr. Ajay Tyagi is the chairman of SEBI. Now answer in comment books, is SEBI a constitutional body or a statutory body or an executive body? Which Indian monument has found place in the Shanghai Cooperation Organization 8 Wonders of SCO list? So recently, the Statue of Unity was included in 8 Wonders of SCO list. SCO stands for Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Statue of Unity is the tallest statue of Sardar Vallabhbhai Patel. It is 182 meter statue. Recently, the second tallest statue of Sardar Patel was inaugurated in Gujarat. So the Statue of Unity is situated on the bank of river Narmada and it is facing Sardar Sarovar Dam. SCO is Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Headquarter of SCO is in Beijing. Beijing is in China. India and Pakistan became the full-fledged member of SCO in 2017 after Asthana Summit. Now SCO has two type of summits. One is summit with head of states and second is summit with head of governments. So last year the summit with head of governments held in Uzbekistan and this year India is going to host this summit and obviously it is first time that India is going to host this summit 
because India recently that means in 2017 itself India became a full fledged member now coming back to the summit with head of states so last year that is in 2019 this summit held in Kyrgyzstan and in 2020 it is going to be in Russia who has recently been appointed as the new director general of CRPF that is Central Reserve Police Force so recently ACC that is appointments committee of cabinet appointed Mr AP Maheswari as the new DG of CRPF CRPF is under MHA MHA stands for Ministry of Home Affairs Home Minister is Mr Amit Shah and Home Secretary is Mr Ajay Kumar Bhalla and recently Mr Amit Shah was in news as in New Delhi he launched I4C that is Indian Cyber Crime Coordination Center in addition to that Mr Amit Shah was also in news as recently in Gujarat first cyber crime prevention unit was launched by Union Home Minister Mr Amit Shah and the name of this unit is Aswast so this Aswast will act as a helpline for cyber crime victims which famous international money transfer company recently partnered with Abix Cash to expand its presence in Indian market so recently international money transfer company MoneyGram and Abix Cash signed an agreement to expand their business in India so now Abix Cash will be the exclusive partner of MoneyGram in India MoneyGram is a international money transfer company which is the first indian airport to get disabled aircraft recovery equipment that is dair so the kempegowda international airport in bengaluru is first indian airport to be with the capability of recovering disabled aircraft now bengaluru is in karnataka and recently karnataka was in news as it was a top state as per india innovation index index was prepared by niti aayog Apart from that Karnataka was also in news as recently Karnataka government decided to install GPS devices on garbage disposal trucks in Bangalore city apart from that Karnataka was also in news as former governor of Karnataka Mr T N Chaturvedi passed away recently in addition to that recently Karnataka Gramin Bank started mobile ATMs in rural areas of Karnataka Which company recently announced to offer guidance to tech startup companies from five Indian states? So recently, Microsoft has announced that it has selected tech startup companies from five states, and these startup companies were selected through a competition, and the name of this competition was Emerge X. So now Microsoft is going to offer guidance to these tech startup companies, and these five states are. Gujarat, Maharashtra, Rajasthan, Kerala and Telangana. Now, if we talk about Microsoft, recently Microsoft was also in news because of K12 education transformation framework. So, this is an initiative which was launched by Microsoft to facilitate digital transformation of of schools in India. The present CEO of Microsoft is Mr. Satya Nadella and the founders of Microsoft are Mr Bill Gates and Mr Paul Allen Mr Paul Allen passed away few months ago and the headquarters of Microsoft is in Washington in USA On which date armed forces veterans day is celebrated across India so it is celebrated on 14th of January every year to commemorate the retirement date of first Indian chief of army staff KM Kariyappa the present chief of army is general manoj mukund narwane while the former army chief general bipin rawat was recently appointed as the chief of defense staff and chief of defense staff is going to be the head of newly created department of military affairs this dma is under defense ministry which badminton player recently won the malaysian masters title so recently Kento Momota from Japan defeated Victor Axelsen and won the Malaysian Masters title. The Vice President of India is to inaugurate the Center of Excellence for Studies of which Indian language 
in Nellore. So the Vice President of India, Mr. Naidu, is to inaugurate the Center of Excellence for Studies in Classical Telugu in Nellore. Actually, the Vice President had earlier suggested the Union Government to shift this center from Mysuru to one of the Telugu states. So that's why it was shifted to Andhra Pradesh in Nellore. Now, if we talk about Andhra Pradesh, recently state was in news as the state government decided to deliver sand at those steps. Now, it should be kept in mind that this decision was taken to prevent illegal sand mining. And the Section 23C of MMDR Act of 1957 provides the rule to prevent illegal sand mining. Now, MMDR stands for Mines and Minerals Development and Regulation Act of 1957. Apart from that, Andhra Pradesh was also in news as recently Andhra Pradesh Chief Minister launched Amma Vodi scheme. Now, under this scheme, the students belonging to below poverty line, that is BPL, will get 15,000 rupee per annum. Now, for this money, the parents of child should ensure that the child has 75% attendance in school. So, it is a initiative to encourage parents to send their kids to schools regularly. Apart from that, Andhra Pradesh was also in news because of Nadu Nedu initiative and this is an initiative for the transformation of government schools. In addition to that, Andhra Pradesh was also in news because of Disha Act. The communication satellite of ISRO GSAT-30 is scheduled to launch abroad through which vehicle? Right answer is Arian 5. So, GSAT-30 is a communication satellite and it will be launched using Arian 5 launch vehicle and it will be launched from French Guiana. Now, this GSAT-30 is going to replace INSAT-4 that was our previous communication satellite and now GSAT-30 is going to replace it as GSAT-30 will provide additional services with extended coverage. ISRO is Indian Space Research Organization. Chief of ISRO is Dr. K. Sivan. ISRO is under Department of Space and the headquarter of ISRO is in Bengaluru in Karnataka. The Government of India recently signed a Memorandum of Understanding for Content Exchange Program between All India Radio and National Broadcaster of which country? So recently, MOU was signed between India and Bangladesh for Content Exchange Program between All India Radio of India and National Broadcaster of Bangladesh. Now, this Memorandum, now this memorandum of Understanding was signed in the presence of Union INB Minister, that means Information and Broadcasting Minister, Mr. Prakash Jaudeka. Now, if we talk about Bangladesh, recently Bangladesh was in news as it is the top performing country in South Asia in Gender Gap Report. If we talk about Gender Gap Report, the report is published by World Economic Forum. And recently this report was released and as per this report, India is on 112nd position. Last year, India was on 108th position. WEF is publishing this report since 2006 and in 2006, India's ranking was 98. So this gender gap report focus on four dimensions. First is economic, second is educational, third is health and survival and next one is political. So Bangladesh is the only country to feature in the top 50 of gender gap report. That means only South Asian country to feature in this top 50 of gender gap report while Yemen is the worst performer. Yemen is on 153rd position. Iraq is on 152nd and Pakistan is on 151st. So you can see the difference between India, Pakistan and Bangladesh. Bangladesh is far ahead than India and Pakistan in terms of gender gap report. Now coming to these four dimensions. In economic dimension, India's ranking is 149 while in case of educational it is 112 in case of health it is 150th and in case of political it is 18th so other than political in rest of the three dimensions India is performing poor this Raisina dialogue is jointly organized by Ministry of External Affairs and with which think tank of India so it is ORF ORF that is Observer Research Foundation and MEA organize 
this Raisina dialogue and this dialogue held in New Delhi and this time it is the 5th edition and the theme of this year's dialogue was navigating the alpha century if we talk about MEA it is Minister of External Affairs present minister is Mr S Jay Shankar while present foreign secretary is Mr V K Gokhale next foreign secretary is going to be Mr Harshvardhan Sringla apart from that MEA was also in news as recently it decided to create nest division nest stands for new and emerging strategic technologies who is the author of book titled asha and the spirit bird which recently won the uk children's book award so it is a book by jasbinder bilan jasbinder bilan is an indian born author who is now settled in england and her book won the costa children's book award of uk The Indian Navy recently revised its fuel standards to bring down its carbon footprint by conducting a study with which Indian oil and gas company. So recently, Indian Navy conducted an extensive study in collaboration with IOCL, that is Indian Oil Corporation Limited, for a reduced carbon footprint. Now, recently, a new high flash, high speed diesel was launched, and it is IN five one two. so it is high flash high speed diesel and this modified fuel will be supplied by haldia and paradeep refineries of iocl so this better quality fuel will be helpful in reducing carbon footprint now what is the meaning of carbon footprint it means carbon emission now if we talk about indian navy recently indian navy was in news because of milan exercise and this exercise held in Vishakhapatnam and the theme for this Milan exercise was synergy across the seas. Milan stands for multilateral naval exercise. Multilateral naval exercise. Apart from that, Indian Navy was also in news because of Apharan. It is anti hijacking exercise. Which state has launched Amma Youth Sports Scheme? So recently, the Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu, Mr. E K Palani Swami. launched this amma youth sports scheme and the scheme aims at identifying youth talents in villages and providing them appropriate training so that they can take part in high level sport events so this is a scheme for nurturing the talents so that they can perform well in sports and this is a scheme by tamil nadu government recently tamil nadu was in news as it became the first state to enact low on contract farming apart from that tamil nadu was also in news as recently good governance index was released as per this index the state and union territories were divided into three categories big states northeast and hill states and union territories so in big states tamil nadu is the top performer while in northeast and hill states himachal pradesh is the top performer while in case of union territories puducherry is the top performer apart from that tamil nadu was also in news as recently government of india decided to set up new rocket launch pad in kulsekhar pattinam in tamil nadu at present isro that is indian space research organization has two launch pads at satish dhawan space center and it is in sri hari kota and sri hari kota is in andhra pradesh apart from that tamil nadu was also in news as India's second space port for launching small satellites will be set up in Tamil Nadu. Answer in comment box in which place in Tamil Nadu it will be set up. Sahyog Kaizen is an annual joint exercise between the Coast Guards of India and which country? So it is annual joint exercise between the Coast Guards of India and Japan. Japan is the host of this year 2020 Summer Olympic Games. the prime minister of japan is mr shinzo abe the capital of japan is tokyo and the currency of japan is yen japan was the host of last year g20 summit this year saudi arabia is going to be the host of g20 summit which state was recently awarded as the best performing state in reducing road accidents in road safety stakeholders meet so recently road safety stakeholders meet was organized in new delhi and during this meeting defense minister 
Mr. Rajnath Singh presented the Best Performing State in Reducing Road Accidents Award to State of Tamil Nadu. Now, if we talk about road accidents, recently a report was released by Ministry of Road Transport and Highways and as per that report, Tamil Nadu was on top in terms of road accidents. Now, if we talk about Ministry of Road Transport and Highways, present minister is Mr. Nitin Gadkari and recently, Mr. Gadkari announced that fastags will be mandatory for all vehicles from 15th of January. Fastags work on the basis of RFID and recently, Paytm became the largest issuer of fastags so far. The meetings of IDA, that is Island Development Agency, are chaired by which Union Minister? So, right answer is Home Minister. Recently, the sixth meeting of IDA held and it was chaired by Union Home Minister, Mr. Amit Shah. IDA stands for Island Development Agency. Answer in comment box, which organization provide blue flag tag? Kaifi Azmi, whose birth anniversary was recently observed, was a famous personality of which field? So, Mr. Kaifi Azmi was a famous Indian Urdu poet and songwriter and recently his birth anniversary was celebrated and Google dedicated a doodle on that day as a tribute. So that's why he was in news. Now answer in comment box is Urdu mentioned in the 8th schedule of Indian constitution? Who is the first women parade adjutant for the Republic Day parade in India? So Captain Tanya Sergil will be the first woman to become the Republic Day Parade Adjutant. It means she will be the officer responsible for the parade. And she is an officer of Indian Army's Corps of Signals. Now, if we talk about Republic Day, the President of Brazil, Mr. Jair Bolsonaro, is going to be the guest of Republic Day ceremony. Brazil was in news as it was the host of most recent summit of BRICS. BRICS stands for Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa. On which date Indian Army Day is celebrated across India every year? So every year on 15th of January, Indian Army Day is celebrated. Now why 15th of January is important? It is important because on 15th of January in 1949, General K.M. Kariyappa became the first Commander-in-Chief of Indian Army after independence. And recently, during this celebration of Army Day, Captain Tanya Sergil became the first female to lead an all-man contingent at Army Day Parade. Now, present Army Chief is General Manoj Mukund Narwane, while the previous Army Chief was General Bipin Rawat and now he has been appointed as India's first CDS. CDS stands for Chief of Defence Staff and CDS is going to be the head of DMA. DMA stands for Department of Military Affairs. It is recently created department in Defense Ministry. Present Defense Minister is Mr. Rajnath Singh. Which bank has recently signed a memorandum of understanding with South Central Railway Zone of Indian Railways for doorstep collection of earnings from the railway station? So recently, a memorandum of understanding was signed between South Central Railways and State Bank of India for the doorstep collection of earnings from railway stations. Now at present, the earnings of smaller railway stations are sent through cash and after this agreement, SBI is going to ensure the collection of earnings by these railway stations. Now if we talk about SBI, recently SBI was in news as SBI announced RBDG that is Residential Builder Finance with Buyer Guarantee Scheme. And the scheme aims to give a push to residential sales and to improve the confidence of home buyers. Apart from that, SBI was also in news as recently SBI opened its branch in Melbourne and therefore SBI became the first Indian bank to have a branch in Australian state of Victoria. The Prime Minister of Australia is Mr. Scott Morrison and recently Australia was in news as the Australian government committed an emergency wildlife fund worth 50 million Australian dollar. So this emergency wildlife recovery fund was created by the government of Australia. 
India recently provided nearly 1 lakh academic textbooks to which country to assist its development in higher education and research. So recently, Indian Ambassador for Madagascar, Mr. Abhay Kumar, handed over nearly 1 lakh academic textbook to Madagascar for assisting its development in higher education and research. Now these books were published by NCERT, that is National Council for Educational Research and Training. Now recently NCERT was also in news as NCERT and CBSC launched this Tamanna initiative. Tamanna stands for Try and Measure Aptitude and Natural Abilities. So this is an initiative by NCERT and CBSC to help students to make right career choice. Apart from that, NCERT was also in news as recently Shaksham initiative was launched. It is a fuel conservation initiative by PCRA. PCRA stands for Petroleum Conservation Research Association and it is under Ministry of Petroleum. So this initiative will create awareness about fuel conservation and for this purpose PCRA has prepared comic books in collaboration with NCERT and the theme of these books is fuel conservation. Which cricketer won the Sir Garfield Sobers trophy for the player of year presented by ICC that is International Cricket Council. So recently ICC presented these annual awards and the Sir Garfield Sobers trophy for player of year was given to Mr. Ben Stokes. He is a player of England. On the other hand, Indian opener Mr. Rohit Sharma was named ODI player of year. ODI stands for One Day International. While Australian bowler Mr. Pat Cummins was presented the Test Player of Year award. On the other hand, Spirit of Cricket award was presented to Mr. Virat Kohli and Mr. Deepak Chahar. Mr. Deepak Chahar was given T20 Performance of the Year award. If we talk about ICC, it is International Cricket Council. The chairperson of ICC is Mr. Shashank Manohar and CEO is Mr. Manu Sahani. On the other hand, the headquarter of ICC is in Dubai. Dubai is in UAE and recently in Dubai, World's First Camel Hospital was started. Which company has recently announced to invest $1 billion to digitize the small and medium businesses in our country? So recently, Mr. Jeff Bezos, the head of Amazon, announced that the company is going to invest $1 billion to digitize the small and medium businesses in India. In addition to that, Mr. Jeff Bezos also announced that Amazon India will export Make in India products worth Rs. 10 billion by 2025. If we talk about Amazon, Mr. Jeff Bezos is the founder of Amazon and recently Amazon announced Project Zero. This is an initiative by the company to block the selling of fake goods. Apart from that, Amazon was also in news because of Project Kuiper. Answer in comment box what is the objective of this project. In addition to that, recently Amazon was in news as it decided to open first farm collection center of India in Pune. Pune is in Maharashtra. Chief Minister of Maharashtra is Mr. Uddhav Thakre. Governor is Mr. Bhagat Singh Koshyari. And recently, Mr. Ajit Pawar took oath as the Deputy Chief Minister of Maharashtra. Which organization release ESSER report that is Annual Status of Education Report in our country? So it is released by an NGO named Pratham. NGO stands for Non-Governmental Organization. So this ESSER report is released by NGO Pratham. And as per this report, the 5-year-old children in private institutions performed better as compared to the same aged children in government schools. In addition to that, the report highlighted that the more girls are being enrolled in the government schools as compared to boys. Means more boys are enrolled in private schools and more girls are enrolled in government schools. So this is showing a clear discrimination by the parents who prefer to send their boys to the private school and they send their girls to the government schools. So this kind of discrimination still exists and it has been highlighted by this report. Now coming back to ESSA, this ESSA report is the largest citizen-led survey 
in our country and since 2005 ngo pratham is conducting this survey which global telecommunication companies arm has recently launched a new privacy focused search engine called one search so recently verizon media has launched a new privacy focused search engine called one search now this search engine claims that the search history of the user will not be stored and it will be self destructible search data that means the search history will not be used to show advertisement based on your search history usually what happens is when you search a mobile phone then the browser will start showing you advertisement related to mobile phones that means the information of your search history is used for customized advertisement and this one search search engine claims that the search history of user will not be used and it will be self destructed therefore it will not be shared with advertisers and it is an initiative by Verizon Media eminent filmmaker and director mr manmohan mohapatra passed away recently he was from which state of india so he was from odisha and he was the prominent filmmaker from odisha and sita rati was the first full fledged odia film which he directed in 1976 the district administration of which state has won the swachhta darpan award for adopting innovative methods in plastic waste management so recently district administration of puri in odisha won the swachhta darpan award for adopting innovative methods in plastic waste management and the award was presented by the department of drinking water and sanitation and this department is under jal shakti ministry and present jal shakti minister is mr gajinder singh sekhawat now coming back to odisha recently odisha was in news as it launched samriddhi it is new agriculture policy which was launched by odisha government odisha was also in news as recently it launched madhu app to help school children odisha was also in news as recently odisha chief minister launched jal shakti initiative odisha chief minister launched jal sathi initiative and this initiative is launched to ensure supply of safe drinking water to all households in the state of odisha the integrated road accident database that is irad was recently launched at the road safety stakeholders meet and the question is it has been developed by which institution so recently union ministers mr rajnath singh and mr nitin gadkari launched this irad during road safety stakeholders meet and this meet held in delhi so this irad is a central database so this is central accident database management system to analyze the causes of accident so that we can reduce the number of accidents and this database was developed by iit madras and this project is supported by world bank and it is going to be implemented through nic nic stands for national informatics center now this nic was established in 1976 and it is an attached office under ministry of electronics and information technology now coming back to this road safety stakeholders meet this was organized in new delhi and recently defense minister mr rajnath singh presented the best performing state in reducing road accident award to tamil nadu tamil nadu was the best performer in terms of reducing road accidents robert abela was recently elected as the prime minister of which country right answer is malta so recently robert abela was elected as the prime minister of malta the previous prime minister of malta was mr joseph muscat and present prime minister is mr robert abela mr joseph muscat was forced to exit after he was found in the murder of a journalist now if we talk about malta it is a southern european island country in mediterranean sea the capital of malta is valletta and the currency is euro tal volcano which was seen in news recently is situated in which country so recently the second most active volcano philippines was in news it is tal volcano and it is located on the luzon island and recently 
Tal volcano emitted lava and ash clouds up to 9 miles. So that's why it was in news. Now if we talk about Philippines, recently Philippines was also in news because of other natural calamities. Recently Philippines was in news because of typhoon. So one was t typhoon Kamuri, another one was typhoon Fanafon. Locally it was known as Ursula. The retail inflation rose to a 5 year high of 7.35% in December 2019. Now the question is which organization releases the retail inflation figures. So retail inflation is measured by CPI that is consumer price index and this CPI is released by NSO. NSO is National Statistical Office and this NSO is under MOSPI that is Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation. Now this CPI is about retail inflation. Inflation means increase in the price while deflation is decrease in price and disinflation is decrease in rate of price rise. And there is one more term stagflation. This is stagnant economic growth plus inflation. That means even though there is a inflation unemployment is still high. Now this is CPI related to retail inflation. WPI that is wholesale price index is related to wholesale inflation and WPI is released by Office of Economic Advisor under Ministry of Commerce. Now answer in comment box what is the difference between headline inflation and core inflation. The India Meteorological Department recently celebrated its 145th Foundation Day. IMD functions under which Union Ministry? So IMD functions under Ministry of Earth Sciences and recently on 15th of January it celebrated its 145th Foundation Day and present DG of IMD is Mr. Mrityanjay Mohpatra. He is popularly known as Cyclone Man of India and recently Mr. Mohpatra was in news as he has been elected as a member of Executive Council of WMO for 2019-2023. WMO stands for World Meteorological Organization. Answer in comment box where is the headquarter of WMO. So these were the most important questions. Thank you and that's all for the day.